Welcome to the Mills Environmental Awareness Presentation. Over the next few minutes, we will review with you some of the key elements that have been put in place to take care of the environment. The Mill has established an EMS which stands for Environmental Management System. The EMS is a documentation process which defines our interactions with the environment, our legal obligations, and how we responsibly handle and improve our use of the environment that we operate in. You can find our EMS in a paper manual, and the information is also available to our employees online. The EMS is based on third-party standards, which are used worldwide. To ensure that the EMS continues to be effective, and improves our handling of the environment, the system is frequently audited. As we mentioned, the information in the EMS can be viewed on paper, in a manual located in the Mills Engineering Department, or you can view the information online. To put in place an EMS, the mill first had to understand how its manufacturing process interacted with the environment, and how these interactions, or aspects as they are called in the standards, impacted the environment. By putting in place an environmental policy, the mill spelled out the guiding principles it would use to develop its EMS. Of course, the law also has to be considered in developing your EMS. So, the Mills Environmental Policy states, The Bowater Mersey Paper Company Limited, Paper Mill Site, Environmental Management System, or the EMS, has implemented this environmental policy for the management of the environmental aspects of this mill. The provisions of this policy responsibly address the potential environmental impacts of our activities, products, and services. The Mersey Mill is committed to comply with all applicable legal regulations and other requirements to which the mill subscribes. In addition, the mill is committed to the concept of continual improvement and the prevention of pollution. The Mersey Mill has the following environmental guiding principles. We believe being an environmentally responsible mill is good business. We will be proactive and take every reasonable action to avoid violating an established permit. We rely on many resources, including wood fiber and water, in our production process and are committed to using these resources sustainably and efficiently through waste reduction, process improvement, recycling, and research. It is the responsibility of all Mersey Mill employees, as well as visitors to our site, to act in accordance with this policy. As was mentioned earlier, the mill has defined its environmental aspects, and from them has further identified which ones could have the most significant impact on the environment. For these significant aspects, the mill has put in place a number of programs or procedures to control and monitor the aspects, in order to avoid or minimize their impact on the environment. Let's have a look at the mill's significant aspects. The pulp and paper making processes utilize a large quantity of water, which is reused and recycled many times, but the water eventually gets purged from the process as effluent. This effluent, known as process white water, must be treated before it is released back into the environment. The mill has constructed and operates a water treatment plant to treat all of the millions of liters of effluent it produces every day. Here is an aerial view of the large treatment lagoons, used to clean up the effluent before it is discharged. The quality of the treated effluent is continuously monitored and tested to ensure it meets the requirements set by the government. Spills are another class of significant aspects the mill must manage. There is always the potential for pulp or untreated white water to be spilled from the process. Spills may also occur as a result of a release of chemicals or petroleum products used in the manufacturing process. The mill has taken several steps to avoid having spills. Training is a key component to avoiding spills. Operators are properly trained to run equipment such as tanks pumps and valves, with computer systems, that help to control and monitor the processes to avoid spilling pulp 
white water or chemicals. Engineering controls, such as containment dikes, have been incorporated with storage tanks to capture releases in the event of a spill. Even with all these preventive measures in place, one must still be prepared to deal with a potential spill. So, what do you do if you come across a spill? Well, the first thing is to remain calm. Always ensure that you stay safe. If the spill is from one of the mill's processes, and you, as a contractor, have not been specifically trained in dealing with this area of the mill, then do not attempt to address the spill. If the spill is as a result of your project and you have the knowledge to deal with the spill, then attempt to do so. We will discuss this point a little further in the presentation. If you cannot deal with the spill, then leave the area immediately, and if possible, have one of your employees barricade or guard the area from a safe distance to warn others. Immediately notify an area supervisor or department operator. They will take charge and address the spill. After notifying department personnel, or if you can't get a hold of anyone, you must contact the mill shift supervisor. You can reach the shift supervisor by picking up any mill phone and dialing 8650. Or, with your cell phone, dial directly 3548650. If you still can't get a hold of anyone, call the mill's emergency number, either by dialing 111 on a mill phone, or calling the mill with your cell phone at 3543445, and then, extension 111. Tell the person at the guard house the nature of your emergency, where the spill is located, and if you know, the type of spill. They will dispatch mill personnel to respond. Once you have made sure the spill is being addressed, Contact your mill project controller, or your assigned contact, to inform them of the situation. Please do not leave the mill site. You may be required to provide further information. You will be contacted by a mill investigator to collect information on the events you witnessed. In this next section, we will review the specific requirements you, the contractor, must fulfill prior to starting your work on the mill site, and your environmental responsibilities while on site. If your project requires you to bring any chemicals or petroleum products on site, then you must submit a material safety data sheet or MSDS for the product to your mill project controller prior to bringing the product on site. All MSDS documentation must be less than three years old. This is a legal requirement. The mill project controller will get the products approved for use on the mill site. While on site with the product, you must have a copy of the MSDS at all times. It is expected that all contractors using such products are familiar with the information contained in the respective documents. For large volumes of the product, or if the product is considered environmentally toxic, especially to aquatic life, there are additional requirements that must be met. What we mean by large volumes is material that will be stored or used in containers that are not easily handled by one person, such as drums, totes, or semi bold containers, and so on. The MSDS should normally indicate if a product or one of its components is environmentally toxic. If the product you are planning to use falls under this requirement, you must set up to have adequate means of containment to catch any product if the product were to spill. You must put together a plan on how you will address any potential spill of the product. You should review your plan with your mill project controller. You must have adequate material to address a spill. You should have with you a proper spill kit. If you do not have a spill kit, you should identify the closest mill spill kit appropriate for your product. If you use material from any of our spill kits, Notify your mill project controller. He, she, will direct you on how to replenish the kit. We have replacement material for all spill kits on our site. Finally, all workers on your team should have the knowledge and understand the plan on how to address the spill. Once the job is complete, you should remove all remaining products from the site without delay. We will not store any product on site for you. It is imperative that absolutely no product of any kind 
be put down any drain, or any floor trench. This includes any petroleum product. Our water treatment system is not designed to treat petroleum chemicals. All products, and contaminated materials, must be disposed of, in an appropriate manner, and, according to our waste management procedures. We will review those procedures later in the presentation. Even with taking all these precautions, it is still possible for a spill to occur. So, what should you do if a spill happens? As we discussed, you, the contractor, are responsible for containing and cleaning up the spill. Follow your spill response plan. Remember to do this safely, using all necessary personal protective equipment and proper cleanup material. Notify your mill project controller. All waste must be separated and packaged as per our waste management procedures. In most cases, waste product must be separated from contaminated materials, such as absorbent pads, skimmers, rags, shovels, hoses, and so on. The contractor is responsible for the proper disposal of all and any waste generated on site. If the mill has to dispose of any contractor waste, especially hazardous waste, then the contractor will be back charged for all disposal and associated mill fees. Finally, a full investigative report will have to be produced. Contact your mill project controller to initiate the investigation. The final part of our EMS we want to review with you today is our waste management procedures. As you can see in this flow diagram, the mill has put in place a number of procedures to handle all of the various wastes it produces. Non-hazardous materials are typical of the waste you produce at home. Hazardous wastes, including waste produced from spills, have specific disposal procedures that must be followed. When you are preparing your spill response plan for a product you will use on site, you should include the appropriate disposal procedure. All waste management procedures can be found in the EMS documentation. Here are some examples of how waste from our maintenance activities is properly disposed. Contaminated rags or other solids are placed in clear plastic bags. Small containers, such as grease tubes, are placed in their own bagging system. And waste material, such as used oil, is kept separate. All of these segregated wastes are removed from site by a third party hazardous waste contractor. This slide shows some of the common recycling centers we have stationed throughout the mill. We hope you will do your part to help us manage all the waste streams we generate. Thank you for taking the time to view this presentation. We hope you have gained an appreciation for how we take care of the environment that surrounds us. If you have any questions, please ask your mill project controller. Good luck on your project. Have a great and safe day.